All right. Beautiful. <sighs> All right. Let's just drop straight in. I'm going to drop myself in because I can feel everyone else's energies and anticipation and a bit of nerves, uh, which always can being so sensory and you'll be able to see the uh, interaction I have with energy that it's really important for me so that I can read clearly each individual and also read myself and my body. So just putting your right hand on your heart and your left hand on your sacral. We're going to take three deep breaths with the intention to breathe in and release all of the worries, the stories, the nerves, connect in with your heart and your body, anchor into the earth. So taking a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. In through the nose, connecting deeply with your true self. And out through the mouth. Breathing in. And breathing out. Continuing to breathe gently. And just allowing yourself to come back to your body in your own time. So anyone welcome from Facebook land. Um, this morning I got this uh, in um, my own trigger. And uh, Spirit spoke in a way of sharing some of the processes I do internally um, and how I work with people to bring more awareness and to give them more tools. And uh, my biggest focus at the moment is the ripple effect. And so if I can share something and it has a ripple effect on others and gives more understanding on doing the inner work and how our vibration as it shifts, it has an energetic effect on others just by being, and that's my focus. So this process, I'm going to go through basically the people that are on this call. Um, I am going to allow the energy to guide me through and speak to each individual with whatever piece of suffering or the story or whatever's alive inside of them right now and do a process of reading into the mind, the somatics of the body and the energetics of the soul and start looking at the core blockages or the core wounding that sits there that holds these distortions in place. This is one of the ways that I work with people in my individual sessions and with myself um, so that I can start to layer away. Because what I was on, I noticed was that I was doing all of this work and I was going a lot on these surface levels. And the more that I've understood the Holy Trinity, um, the mind, body and soul component or the father, son and child, however you want to look at it, I understood that I could remove with ease mass amounts of energy. Because if you think about a multidimensional uh, being, we have experiences. We might feel unworthiness here, and we might have felt it here. We might feel it right now. We might have felt it in past lives. We might have felt it before us. We might have it programmed in from the collective consciousness. We may have ancestral um, unworthiness. So. Looking at a timeline, I guess, of, okay, well, let's just go back to when you felt unworthiness. You're only going to be working on whatever layer of that unworthiness and anything that was attached to that or above. So when I try and work with people, it's like looking to the deepest that that person, that individual can go within their own consciousness and find this energy within their mind and their body. Um, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be a story attached to it. And I think this is where, when we're doing healing work, we can get, um, trying to understand a meaning of an energy or a feeling and we want to attach why, why this was here. So why did I feel this sorrow or sadness? And when we do that, we, our mind gets in the way and we don't allow for the recognition and the witnessing, which is all that's required is you just need to witness it. And it may be just witnessing, oh, I feel like a lot of shame. 
and that is the witnessing. And then you consciously choose to witness that and then release it or hand it up and clear it. Um, and that's the intentional part. Um, when I work on a soul level, um, I work with people mainly clearing with energetics or light language, um, but you don't have to. The soul level work is done at the same time as say if anyone's listened to theta healing theta's all done with intentional processes and demands and commands um so there's so many different ways that we can do it but it's really just being with what's alive so rachel <laughs> um if you want to be brave enough to i'm just going to check facebook and make sure we are alive uh, and I'm not sure how we're actually presenting on Facebook. We've got all of our faces. No, we just have me. Wonderful. Okay. So, Rachel, if you would like to, um, and anyone watching, uh, anyone watching, there's a couple of people on Zoom that you cannot see and <laughs> that you will get to see. Um, if you're watching, please hashtag um, watching live. Let me know how you're feeling inside your body and your heart, what's come up for you today, even just three words. Um, I'm gonna give you three words of how I feel right now. Mm. Tired, expansive, and grateful. Uh, Rachel, do you like to, um, yeah, unmute, beautiful. And so, we should be able to have a discussion now, hopefully, where we both are seen on this recording. Can you talk for me? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 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 That's all right. Um, uh, okay, I'm going to do gallery view just because um, it's going to flick between otherwise. So, there we go. Actually, no speaker. All right, we're going to do this. Um, it'll just flick between you and me. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to, what I would like you to do before we go into anything is literally drop into your body. In the same way that we dropped into at the call, I just want you to arrive into your body. I want you to take three deep breaths. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Breathing in and breathing out. One more. And I'm asking your consent as you continue to breathe gently in and out so you stay in your body. I want you to focus on your breath. Do I have consent to enter your energetic field? Yes, you have my full permission. Okay. Now, I want you to tune in to what it was that came up for you when you decided that you wanted to go through this process with me here in this space. What was the story or the narrative? What are you experiencing? Um. Struggling with my, my childhood trauma and, and self-love. Mm -hmm. Without needing to add any details, right? There is childhood trauma and self-love. You're feeling a level of not being loved at the moment. And what I want you to do is go into the part of your body where you feel unlovable. Is there heat? Is there tingles? Is there a part of your physical vessel that's talking to you right now? It's like my whole entire body is tingling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stay focused on your breath. It's okay. Keep your eyes closed for a moment. What we're going to do is we're going to ask the ego, the identity, the character that's being created in this life experience to just step to the side, to the left, know that it's safe, 
you're safe and held in this experience and that anything comes up is just a memory and a thought form and you are completely held. You can cope with anything that arises and it's just energy moving through the body. Knowing that your higher self is communicating and your subconscious is opening. So if you go into the feelings of feeling unlovable, can you bring to mind a specific person or time frame? My dad. Mm -hmm. And whereabouts do you feel that in your body? In my stomach, in my heart, in my solar plexus, in all this part of my body. Mm -hmm. What narrative do you have if you stay, stay with yourself? Stay closed, eyed if you need to. You don't have to open your eyes to communicate with me if it's easier. You can stay in a place of safety. What was the belief that was made up in this moment that you're experiencing right now? That I'm not lovable. Mm -hmm. I'm not worthy of love. Mm -hmm. And what's the worst thing about not being worthy of love? darkness mm -hmm. going into that darkness knowing that it's safe to look into the darkness it's safe to look into your shadows and that when you look into your shadows you can see light you're just calming the nervous system asking the nervous system to relax Allowing the emotion to come. We're asking the body, the mind, the soul through all timelines, dimensions and realities to clear the feelings of being unlovable. The darkness. And imagine handing it up to creator. Just letting it go. That's the worst thing. Feeling empty. Mm -hmm. Where does that emptiness sit in your body? My chest. Mm -hmm. Placing your hands on your chest. And talking to that emptiness. Allowing that emptiness to have a voice. What would that emptiness say? What does that emptiness desire, need? Self-love. Mm -hmm. And what does self-love look like to this part of the emptiness within the chest? I'm not sure. Are you with it? You do know. You always know. So closing your eyes. Take a deep breath into that space. What's one thing that you need for self love? Happiness. Mm. What did you feel when you said the words happiness? Love. Mm. How do you show 
that part of you of love? What can you actively do? What can you act? How can you actively see yourself? Can you explain a bit more on not understanding what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. That part, the part that feels all of this, take a breath into it. It's okay. Expand open. Allow that chest to open. To feel the love that's been missing. Envision pink, beautiful, misty, sparkly light coming down from Creator. Coming through all parts of you. Changing every atom, molecule, and cell. Reminding you of that which you are. Softly, gently wrapping you, nurturing you. I'm in that space. Ask, what do I need to know I'm love? find myself with. Mm -hmm. Deeper. Learn to let go. Mm -hmm. Under that. It won't let me go deeper. Okay, stay there. All right, reminding the nervous system, the mind, the ego that you're completely safe. Just breathing. You've got a lot of energy moving through your body. Coming back to focus and center, knowing you can see, do this. You're completely capable. We're going to ask the mind to clear away any of the fog distortions, conditioning programs, and blockages that may be preventing the subconscious and the authentic self from clearly speaking. You're going to hand that up, giving it up consciously, transmuting it, and clearing it with the integration. What are you experiencing? I just keep going back to being a little girl again and seeing myself and mm -hmm. showing myself love. Mm -hmm. Okay. Imagine that little girl in front of you. You knowing you're not that little girl, yet she is a part of you. Ask her directly, what do you need to feel love? To be seen by the people I love. Mm -hmm. Do you see her? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you truly see her? Yep. She just wants to be seen. That's all she wants. Mm -hmm. Offer your hand out to her and see if she'll accept it and come into the space of your heart. 
And as you do that, what you're going to do is you're going to make a commitment to her to start to see her and yourself deeper every day. And you're clearing away any of the stories, traumas, conditioning, programs, or any way of that, that are going to prevent you from doing that. And you're going to let them go in the mind, body, and the soul components, completely releasing. And you feel yourself holding her. Yeah. Now what you're going to imagine is that you and her get bound by a ribbon. So there's no more separation. So the fragmented parts of you at that point in time come back into your being now. Just slowly allow yourself to integrate with her, to feel her. Taking a deep breath in, allowing that energy to move. And then exhale. When you're ready, Coming back to the now moment. How are you feeling? Happy. <laughs> what are you experiencing in your body now? I just feel beautiful. Like I feel love. I feel. I feel happiness. I just. I just feel overwhelmed with happiness and love. <laughs> A really beautiful feeling. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there anything specifically you want to share about that experience for you? Um, I'm a little bit overwhelmed, but I'll try my best. Oh. You also yes. don't have to. You have permission and consent to be true in yourself, and if you don't want to express, you don't have to. I just feel like I'm me again. Like I feel like I don't. I can't, it's hard to explain. Like I just feel like I'm whole. Yeah. Like I don't feel like there's something missing. That's beautiful. Mm. So much gratitude for you right now. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, be kind to yourself. You can stay on the call if you want to. <laughs> um, just remember that uh, processes, you know, there was different coding um, and different things moving and so you will feel sh energy shifting um, and just to stay hydrated. Um, I will say this once to everyone. <laughs> um, stay hydrated and gentle to yourself and um sometimes when your neuro pathways fire in different ways you may require a little bit extra sugar so if you're craving chocolate or whatever a sugary piece it is just allow yourself <laughs> give yourself permission <laughs> beautiful is there anything else you'd like to share um no not at this point <laughs> <laughs> beautiful all right um, if you would like to un, um, uh, to mute your microphone, that would be awesome. I just want to say thank you and gratitude. Mm -hmm. Hmm. All right, here we go. Ah, Nicholas. Mm -hmm. Hello. Um, 
Rachel, if you would just like to mute, that would be amazing. Yeah. <sighs> I think I can mute you. Am I muted now? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Super nice to connect with you, Nick. Can I call you Nick? Yep, go for it. Okay. Yeah, it's beautiful. We've been having a bit of a social media uh, connection um, for a little while now, and I don't know, other than meeting you at a pizza shop for about two seconds and not realising it was you, have we had an interaction? So um, I didn't expect it to be in this way, but perfect. Hmm. Um, so what, what came up for you when you decided to jump on this call? Um, to be honest, I'm just intrigued with what you do. I've been watching like some of your videos and I don't know. I just feel like there's some things that I can shift. I'm not hundred percent sure what they are. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's probably the bit that I find a little bit frustrating mm -hmm. is like, you know, because I'm a healer myself and I'm like, why, why can't I find this part? Like, what am I not seeing? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I just think it's, you know, sometimes you need skill sets from other people. Yeah, definitely. We're all um, mirrors to learning ourselves deeper and to having more tools in our tool belt. Um, and it's really beautiful when the coach or the healer decides to uh, reach out um, to be held um, and to receive love. I know for me specifically, that was a really challenging part of my journey last year was being allowed to be seen in my stuff uh, because I had done it all alone for such a long period of time and I didn't want to be seen as weak or vulnerable. Turns out vulnerability is strength. So, <laughs> um I'm really, yeah, I'm really proud of you for jumping on this and thank you for allowing yourself to be vulnerable. Um, first of all, my questions would be, do I have consent to enter your energy field? Sure. Do, yeah. Beautiful. So I have consent to speak into any um, pieces energetically that come up that, yeah. Um, and also let you know you have full permission at any point in time to um, decide that this no longer feels good for you and you would like to stop. Yeah, cool. Um, similar, everyone's different how this works, but I always want to make sure I'm speaking from someone from a place of truth and not from their head. So to drop into your body. So if we just do three deep breaths together, taking a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Anchoring in, in through the nose, and out through the mouth, allowing your field to open, breathing in, and out, just continuing that breath cycle, allowing your heart to open more and more, letting your inner child know, your ego know that you are safe, held and protected. Every atom, molecule, and cell is starting to vibrate at a higher frequency, opening so that the distortions, the stories, the blockages, the untruths can start to dissolve away with every exhale. We're going to ask the identity to be an observer. And we're just going to communicate with the higher self, with the subconscious mind. Whilst you're in that space, um, what are you experiencing? What's alive inside of you right now? Um, I definitely feel some kind of disconnection between the lower parts of my body and physical body and higher parts of my body. Mm -hmm. Um. Is this a normal experience for you? Yeah, like 
I've been I've been doing a bit of work on it through physical exercise and it's definitely improved. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's specifically around the sacral. Like if I feel that the energy, it's like more cold around there. Mm -hmm. um, and it feels like there's a like a physical block. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, that's, I guess, the, the main thing. Mm -hmm. And when you say tune into the part of you that feels like you have a separation between your top half and your lower half, if you could describe that in a visual, what would that be like? What would the description be? Like it's cut. Beautiful. So I'm super glad that you recognize that. And this is not an uncommon piece that's actually very much collectively in there. And it's the severed connection between the, um, if we say the consciousness and the earth realms. So there is a point in your experience and many of our experiences where we've decided it's no longer to be safe to connect it to both. And depending on what that possibly is, um, it, it creates like a severed connection between your energy field. So what I would love you to do is to go into that cut. Go into the consciousness of that cut. Give me an emotion connected to that. Um. I think I've used it for a protection. Mm -hmm. So is the word protection or is there something else? Resonating. Uh, afraid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just going into the feelings of being afraid. We're going to ask to release them because they're just the surface layers. We're going to hand them up to Creator to be released, transmuted, and integrated. I'm going to ask what's under that fear, what's under being afraid, what comes up in the mind's eye, in the body. Releasing any confusion. Yeah, maybe there's a bit of confusion there. Cognitive dissonance, would you call it cognitive dissonance? Um, it's, I don't, I don't think it's that. I, I feel like it's more a like a chameleon type thing. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I have created cognitive dissonance. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. The confusion sits truest in your body at the moment. Uh, yeah, confusion's below deeper than fear. Mm -hmm. um, There might even be anger below confusion. Is there a story attached or any visuals? So the story that's coming to my head, um, like, like memories, is my cousin was schizophrenic and I saw what happened to him. He was a very gentle soul, but it's like I have thought that my gifts were, I guess, losing my mind, being insane. Um, yeah, because what I'm experiencing from the outside perspective is the mind confusion and the stories of not making sense of receiving mm. and 
because there's so much overwhelm in the consciousness around this specific piece, um, which makes sense with what you're putting there, what, what you shared. Um, what do you, okay, if you give it, give it a voice and give it one belief about yourself. One word. Just gonna ask the fear and the anger to be released out of the field. So that we can speak to this belief. I could, would, do you mind if I prompt what I'm sensing? Definitely. Do you know how to muscle test? Yeah. You test if you have the belief, if I see I'm crazy. Yeah, like I already know, that's, it's like insane. Insanity yeah. is the word, like, and that's where it's linked to my cousin, right? You know, the world saw him as insane, but... And I watched him go through like, you know, the system and mm -hmm. it ended up killing him. Okay. Okay, so go below. All right, let's ask, just envision all of the insanity and any beliefs attached to the word insanity through all timelines, dimensions and realities. Envision it in a big bowl in front of you, all of that and anything that ripples off that and just giving it straight up and releasing it, letting it go consciously. Asking creator to transmute it and clear it and come back down to be integrated into the divine light. Energy shift move. Wonder, wonder that what's the worst thing about being insane? Um, maybe being misunderstood. I don't know if that's it. Doesn't feel right. What did you say? Sorry. When you, does it feel right when you say misunderstood when you feel that in your body is there a resonance in your body or is that something that your head's creating i think it's more loneliness to be honest mm -hmm. loneliness is close so if you go into the loneliness what else is there letting go of any fear of the mind just clearing that away, letting I know that it's safe. Mm. I can't think of the word at this exact moment below the loneliness. Mm -hmm. um, so whereabouts are you feeling the level and the depth of the loneliness? Mm. Yeah, I don't feel anything up here. Like this feels good. Um, I don't think it's safety. Um, you feel around your sacral chakra. <clears throat> Maybe doubt, like there's a doubt that I'll be able to. The only way I can describe it is everything that I want in the physical world. It's like a doubt that I will be able to have that if I go up and do all the other stuff as well. It's like around time, maybe. It's like I don't feel like I have the time to do everything that I want to do. So I just like create the disconnection so that I 
Yeah. Hmm. But I don't know. Um, You're just breathing, breathing back into that space, breathing back into where that original like peace was, allowing that to come back up, allowing the awareness of that peace to really start to expand, to be witnessed, to be recognized. So that the truth of that experience or that belief, that part of you can be seen, witnessed and released because it no longer serves. Ooh, okay. So what I'm, yeah, there's like a lot of energy that's just come in from the sacral. It almost feels like nausea to me. Um, so what it, stuck in the throat as well. Yeah. So what it just feel it out or cough it up, whatever feels. <laughs> overwhelm of that energy that's risen up to the surface. You're released with ease. <coughs> Any of the heat in the body and the resistance from the nervous system, we're asking the nervous system to cool down. The atom cells and molecules, it is okay. Peace. There's a spot that is um, above the navel. Yep. Below the rib cage. Yep. Put your hand there and tune into that spot there and ask that part that's connected to this to show you what's the worst thing about being insane. Mm. It's like I have a fear I can use my power for bad or mm -hmm. um, yeah. fear you'll misuse the gifts that you receive. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is there something that desires to be witnessed, to be seen as to why this belief has been created, that you'll use your power for evil? Um, yeah, like I definitely, yeah, wants to be witnessed so that. And is that, just check. Is, um, is it clear to just release it or do we need to see a specific memory? No, I don't think, like I've got memories, but it's not yeah. necessary. Yeah, beautiful. All right, so we're just going to shift that layer by releasing it from the mind, body and soul components through all timelines, dimensions and realities throughout the multidimensional, clearing that energy Consciously release, 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 transmit, 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 integrate, integrate. So under the fear of using your power for evil, what's under that? Mm. I don't know, like this, there's sadness, but I don't know whether that's the deepest level. There's also abandonment, but I don't know if that's the deepest level. What's the worst thing? Let's ask the mind, the higher self, what's the worst thing? 
one word. It's like I, it's like I feel like I failed what I came here to do. Mm -hmm. like, so it's like a. Yep. And um, what happens when you failed in this experience? What was the result of failure? Um, uh, hmm. I'm not hundred percent sure. Just um, asking all protection of the mind, going into this energetic memory and the beliefs that's held in the body that's keeping this block in place to be released. No need to protect. This is a past timeline narrative and story. Leaving it out. Yeah. Have a deep breath. Good. I'm going to say, I'm going to prompt your subconscious mind and your body. Um, and Okay. See what comes up in your body and your energy field when the belief is, if I'm connected, I'll die. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Now, do you want to express what you're experiencing when I've spoken that? Yeah, there's definitely something there. It's like that. Because I've experienced it before when I've done plant medicine. And it's mm -hmm. like, there's that blockage to completely surrender. Although I have done that in the past, there's, it's like a new level of surrendering. Um, Yeah, and it's like if I die, I it's not so I don't think it's me being afraid, but it's like sadness for others, specifically my mom. So it's like Ask yourself, is it your mom or the divine feminine? Or the divine mother? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, that's it. Um, just check that you don't need to see, experience any more of this for us to reconcile this piece. Yeah, I don't need to experience it anymore. So we're going to ask for the belief or any beliefs around being connected in the worst fear being death. Be fully activated, brought to the surface to be witnessed and released. Releasing Gariya Niyanaya Riya Kiya Satya Shataya Satya Tiya Niyanaya Tuwayate from every atom, molecule and cell of the body. And we're asking for the virtues and the downloads from Creator that it is safe to be connected. When I'm kept connected, I feel alive. And just imagining that cut that was through your energy field, rejoining. We're asking every neuro pathway, every meridian, every chakra that was severed in that connection through this point in time to come back into alignment, into connection. So that communication between your body starts to rewire, there's more space, 
clarity, intuition. Any sticky bits around the central channel, asking any implants or intentional distortions that have been placed into your energy field be released. Letting that shift and realign. And I want you to ask your higher self, your subconscious, what is the download or the virtue? What is the missing piece that was taken from you? To pull back into your energy field. I don't know, the word vision comes to me. That was the first word. Mm -hmm. So we're going to call in vision. Any, is there anything else? Pulling in the codes for vision to come through and reconcile this piece. Releasing any blocks in the way of that. Do you feel peace? Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Is peace one that comes, it feels like it would be a virtue that was lost? Yeah, peace would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pulling in the energy of peace to reactivate. Letting the nervous system know that the download's coming through, it's safe to expand and open to them. Is there any other specific words that come through to be activated and downloaded into, into the body for this to be complete? I don't know. I don't know if the word abundance is the right word. Mm -hmm. How's the word fulfillment? Yeah, that's probably clearer. Is there something else that's more clear? Mm. Yeah, it's either clarity or fulfillment, but I think maybe vision covered the clarity. Mm -hmm. All in from creator, the highest divinest version of clarity and fulfillment to come through and be activated in the remembrance of who you are, your highest self, your truest self, your highest divinest timeline. And asking those codes to come into the body, in the mind, body and soul, clearing any distortions, preventing those. I'm getting asked by spirit to activate your rainbow light body. Uh, would you like to receive this activation? Yes, please. I want you to envision rainbow light coming down from the sky and penetrating your root chakra or your perineum and coming all the way up your central channel. Beautiful rainbow light, and then coming out your third eye and circulating back up to Creator. Massive amounts of rainbow energy coming through. Peaceful, blissful. Allowing that energy to just come through gently. And then muscle test if there's anything else that's required. No, I think that's complete. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so when you're ready, just coming back and I'd love to hear how you're feeling. Um, so now that 
uh, like I'm not influencing your thoughts. Um, what I perceived a lot of there was um, um, uh, do, would you like to hear mm -hmm. um, past life time around Lemuria when the fall of Lemuria took place and what happened in um, your what happened in your energy field was like there was a part of you in whatever took place in that time frame for you was it's not safe to be connected to the earth and to the stars or to the consciousness at the same time um, and that by disconnecting yourself there was a level of safety because if you didn't do that then it would mean some level of death now i'm not going to project any of what i like you know i want you to come into your own remembrance of any of that time frame and i don't want to share anything else but that was like the experience that i was seeing was this complete and i was so so it was really awesome for you to recognize that slice between like your energy field um and how are you feeling in your body now yeah it feels really good i'm hungry now which is <laughs> <laughs> awesome <laughs> um is there anything else that you want to share other than hunger <laughs> no i definitely feel um yeah it's like it's it's more flowing um yeah it feels good like it feels like i'm ready so i'm going to share with you what the rainbow light body activation is i'm glad that you said it feels like you're ready so um the rainbow light body is um a part of the energy field so if we imagine our energy field as a program and the program is went like a computer program. When we first come into Earth, it's all working, it lights up, or everything works and communicates beautifully, fast, there's no issues, and then we go through life and we get little bugs and um, viruses and different things and parts of the program turn off or start to falter and don't communicate properly. And what um, the beautiful thing about this is we're basically removing viruses so that your programs can start to light up. And just like computer programs are laid on top of each other, I believe, I'm not a computer <laughs> expert, I couldn't even work out how to delete files from my computer today. So, <laughs> but I believe that they are layered up on top of each other. Um, and the same with our energy light body, right? So we have different layers of light body. And the rainbow light body is a part of us coming back online to stepping into the fullness of our purpose. So um, when you say something like, I'm ready, then there, to me, there's a confirmation that that's communicated and doesn't mean that you're going to go, oh, I know exactly what my purpose is. It means that that's initiated that energetic communication within your field so that you can start to remember and bring back and get clearer and come through. Um, especially if you've had if you've had fear of being insane and you're a bringer of change, you know, I mean, that was huge for me. I was like, I'm fucking crazy. I like should go to D ward. Like this is not normal. So um, clearing all this crazy programming and if I experience multi-dimensional things and if I feel people and if I read minds and all of this, if I remove that from my consciousness, it made a really big difference in my experience because there were so many times that I would um get to a point where i was like this is not normal i have to like you know this is not okay um and it was just so much conditioning on top of conditioning so um i'd love to hear over time if you notice any um shift in some of those more private thoughts that you might have had um yeah yeah, yeah I've, I've already it's it's already been coming up quite a lot mm -hmm. um like i've been noticing it shift so yeah like it's like it just like it feels like it's just about to go next level so it's like you know i need to remove that so that i'm like you know can it can acknowledge it and and, and own it yeah beautiful awesome beautiful. Thank, thank you very much you're welcome thank you you can either stay on or disappear totally up to you <laughs> uh all right elijah your soul's calling me 
Yay. <laughs> Feels like I've been waiting in line to go onto a roller coaster or something. So. <laughs> Uh, Anticipation. Adrenaline, <laughs> yay. Oh, beautiful. Um, how are you feeling right now then with the roller coaster? Uh, a bit anxious. Mm -hmm. um, very energetic. Mm -hmm. I just want to go for a run. Mm -hmm. And um, intrigued. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, do you want to let go of all of those things straight away? Might as well, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, with the intention to release all of that so that we can go into something deeper within and really get to the root of something that's causing you suffering, we're going to just take some really deep breaths and the intention of giving that straight up to Creator with the knowing that it's that simple that easy and all you have to do is let go we're taking the deep breath in and out in and out in and out every breath in more and more to source i need you more. you're good at this stuff <laughs> oh, no. more to your higher self and more and more it's all right i've got you on mute honey now we'll just unmute stay in that space pleasure um you can actually unmute yourself because it will not let me <laughs> let's stay breathing <laughs> Beautiful. Awesome. Okay. You're asking every atom, molecule, and cell to open more and more deeply, releasing all of the energetics that were mentioned before you dropped into breath, not needing to know the stories attached to them, just noticing and witnessing what they were and anything, any beliefs, traumas, thought forms, conditioning, ancestral wounding or past life, memory that was attached to any of those emotions that came up before this expression, just handing it up, releasing it. Opening the body more and more, the energy, the awareness, the consciousness, And I want to ask you, what are you feeling or experiencing within yourself right now? Uh, more centered. My heart's still racing, but yeah, more centered. Okay. Well, let's go straight into that heart space. What do you feel in your heart? You can give it one emotion. Uh, dense. I don't know if dense is an emotion, though. Mm -hmm. and so is the density on both sides of your chest or is it on one specific side uh, i think maybe the right side more so beautiful and if you tune into that side the masculine right side of your chest we're gonna go straight past any stories of anxiety or racing heart or fear and we're just going to dissolve them because I know you have that capacity because I've worked with you. Okay, yes, all you have to do is release it. All right, going back in to that, into that density. What's the belief in an I statement? Uh, I believe I'm unworthy. Mm -hmm. 
When you say that out loud, where else do you feel it in your body? It feels like a whole body sort of thing. Like everything just gets pulled, pulled down. Mm -hmm. The worst thing about being unworthy. I feel like for me is that if I'm unworthy, um, then I can't provide value. I think, and I think of a fear of not being able to provide value. Otherwise, my life is then rendered meaningless. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying it like that, and I want you to really feel into it because you're disassociating from it and you're going into your head. <laughs> what would that be in an I statement? Uh, I feel fear, I suppose. Yeah, I can see that I can feel the fears coming up and uh, the awareness that I have around the fear is being seen in this vulnerability space, whether or not that's true. We're just going to ask to release all fear that's blocking. Take some deep breaths in and out. Coming back into the body. Um, and if you could go into an I statement, the deepest place of vulnerability your mind will allow you. I'm afraid of being seen. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. happens when you're seen? Uh, I'm no longer hiding when I'm seen. I no longer have control. And then, uh, um, yeah, I have no, I don't have any control of how people see me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I suppose it's the, the um, letting go of control or the, yeah. Just envisioning all of that energetically and any uh, quantum entanglements or energetic ripples off of that in front of you. Any beliefs, any traumas, any specific experiences that are attached to control and I don't want to be seen. Breathing it in, and when they exhale, breathing it straight out your mouth. Again, now, we go back into story around value. If people see you and you're afraid of them seeing you and you lose control. Just breathe it out. We're asking any distortions in the heart chakra. To move. And the heat in the body, the fire, the resistance, opening, calming, relaxing. This is not a fight, flight, free, survival moment. You are completely safe. You are loved. I see you. We all see you. We're all resonating with you.
what happens? What is the belief around value? Uh, the belief around value. Can I prompt you? Sure. <laughs> Feel into if this or something more resonating comes up. I'm of no value. Yeah, sort of in the in the back of I don't know at the deepest part of my being. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, there's always like a a really deep desire, almost like an uh, obsession with you know being able to provide some sort of value. I think maybe as a means of self worth. So it's like I feel as though the more value I can provide, the more worthiness I have. Um, but it's kind of like a self fulfilling prophecy because the more I do things and the more I do things of value, I notice it, it ends up like, you know, like I'll, I'll accomplish a lot and it'll mean nothing to me. So it's always like this continual need to accomplish. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I can just get you to sit up straight, breathe into your high heart chakra. All right. Just dissolve all of what's coming up off your shoulders, it's melting away, it's melting down into the earth. We're asking that high heart chakra to open up, allow love and connection back in. Remembering to breathe. The breath helps to receive and transmit energy. allows any emotion to surface and move, knowing that it's safe to bring any of that up. I'm gonna add on to that belief that came through and I want you to feel the depth of where you feel that in your soul. I don't do enough, I'm of no value to humanity. Yeah, felt that in the stomach. Um, I have this fear like, you know, I'll, I'll fail my mission or I'll, my existence will be meaningless if I don't have something to offer. Uh, so it's am like pushing myself as much as I can to clear or to work or to find some gifts or value to offer, to then offer, to then be in service. And it's like, I feel as though if I don't have that to offer, then I won't have any value um, and my life will be meaningless. I don't, yeah, I'll, I won't have fulfilled my mission and I would have failed. Yes. It's kind of what I feel like all the time, pretty much. Right? Thank you for your vulnerability. Go into that grief because I can feel it. Go into the grief of that story and identify it in your body. Allow it to come up. Allow it to be witnessed. Let it go. Clearing it out from the sacral, from the solar plexus, the grief that's sitting in the trunk of the body, gently releasing. Bringing lightness in. Bring it out, pulling down the nervous system, waves of energy, cleansing. Mm -hmm. 
us as part of yourself. What do you need? What do you require? What soul fragments from whatever place that this was created within you through any time, space, dimension, reality? What is the peace and the part that needs to be pulled back and releases? Just cleansing all four chambers of the heart. Balancing that masculine and feminine energy. Allowing that heart to open more and more, that high heart to open more and more. Allowing yourself to open and receive this peace. Knowing that you're real worthy in any stories, any traumas, any past experiences, any energetic blocks in the way of receiving this virtue, this download, so that you can complete this piece of the good. Just clearing. What is that piece, Elijah? Sorry. It's sorry. Oh, uh, sorry. I was saying, what was, what was the question? <laughs> What's the piece that you need to call back? <laughs> hmm. Don't travel too far. feels like it's sort of, for me, it's like knowing in the knowing, like the things that I know, yet mm -hmm. they're very easily disregarded and they're very deep truths. And it's, it's those things that, you know, mm -hmm. what comes through and all of a sudden it's like, you know, I, I question whether it's the truth or whether it's false. And within that, that sort of fracture gets lost and, and disregarded. So it's like, for me, the, from the part that I really, uh, that sort of missing piece is sort of that knowing in the knowing and that when the things come through, it's like, it's not like a trick where I'm being deceived, but yeah, it's, it's the, Yeah. So the word self-trust were coming through, which is the knowing in your knowing. So if you sit and you open your heart, and you open your field, you let go of every single part of resistance, you're all parts of you, your mind, body, and soul, so that you can open to receiving, knowing of the knowing. So trust. Asking for Creator's version of knowing, no self doubt. Complete trust in the truth of what you know with every atom, molecule, and cell of your being. Allowing it in. Giving it in. And all of the things in the way. Creator's version of trust being downloaded into every atom, molecule, and cell of your being right now. I want you to ask yourself if there's anything else required in this moment for you to see, clear, activate, expand, or receive.
uh, that all feels very resolute. So I think that's all good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you can come back to the now when you're ready. Just anchor yourself into the earth. Take a couple of deep breaths. In. And again. Beautiful. I'm proud of you. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm, I feel like it's a really beautiful piece that came up because every single person that I know that is a truth seeker or a bringer of change has this fear of their own knowing and something that I continually teach people and what I was gifted so early in my journey is no one knows what you know, no one. Your knowing is yours and what you feel as your truth and well, I won't even say your truth, as truth is completely undeniable. What you know within yourself is what will transform the reality that we live in. And um, that self-trust piece is a really challenging one for, for many of us. So thank you for unfolding that shift <laughs> energetically yeah. because, um, yeah, like what are you feeling now? Um, just more resolute. Like it sort of feels like there's a very comfortable energy that's a very comfortable sort of um, vivid energy that's replaced a very shaky and um, distorted energy. Mm -hmm. So it sort of feels like at the core of my being where, you know, the foundations would feel as though they're very crumbly and, and falling apart continuously. It sort of feels like there's more stability mm -hmm. um, that's anchored in. So, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Um, I will use this moment to speak into um, why one of the pieces that was mentioned at the start of this recording as to why, right? So when we witness someone in these processes, when we witness the energy, and this is where the ripple effect piece comes in, is that just by watching you in your process, people heal. They heal it themselves because it starts to bring up an energy for them. It starts to, if they're willing and open to sit there and hold space for you and recognize their own body and be with their own breath rather than being closed. You know, if there's a willingness to open and really receive you, they receive themselves. So not only did you allow a part of you to reconcile, but that part of you that is shifting humanity just by you having the willingness to be seen. Oh, thank you. Yeah, as soon as um, I read your post this morning and you're like, oh, be vulnerable and share and things like that, I was like, oh, sweet. Like, because it's, I sort of I have another group that I see and I share with occasionally and things like that. And there's nothing I, I get more excited about than having the opportunity to actually, you know, share really deep things and be seen and met. And, and, um, yeah, so I really appreciate that. And thank you very much. Very, very grateful. I'm grateful for you too. Thanks for continuing to walk this journey with me. It's been a pleasure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good fun. <laughs> uh, all right. Mm -hmm. All right, you can do it. I will. I've got two more, don't I? If you don't have anything else to say, yeah, cool. Oh, thank you for your time and thank you for your energy. So appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you everyone else too. It's a nice space. Super so, welcome. Thank you. Cool. All right. Um, I'm getting called to Christmas. Mm. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I was really, uh, it was really beautiful to, I just want to uh, witness you because it was really beautiful to witness you seeing parts of yourself in Elijah 
and mm. what, from what I received anyway, it felt like it was triggering bits in, in you um, that, um, or a compassion for maybe past versions of yourself. I would love to hear what that was, uh, what that brought up for you, what you experienced. Mm, wonderful. Uh, I love your acuity, by the way. Like you're you're very of course very like sensitive you just pick everything up uh i, I resonate a lot with elijah um, I, I i think uh when he talked about i took some notes when he talked about value and the giving of value equating that to self-worth i remembered my past past myself like a year ago two years ago and literally it was about um letting go of i am not my productivity so like i wanted to share with elijah you know like privately later but i'm happy to share it here like you're not your productivity that was probably one of the biggest lessons that i learned uh in the latter part of 2020. uh it was you know i, I was such a my default programming my conditioning had been you know i'm i'm an overachiever i'm a high achiever i need to keep doing and doing and doing as all this busy work not necessarily um really giving myself the space to check in and see if i'm if what i'm doing is for the highest highest purpose uh, and i had to get that rest and get that check from life just going hang on you need you need a break sometimes and you're not your productivity was a big statement for me to go oh i am not my productivity like my value is not in the the output of what i do my value is who i am my value is my soul values me so um that gave me a lot of permission to go okay well, you know, i'm gonna get there anyways i don't have to wind myself up and uh <laughs> and and yeah be this person this using human design like i'm a generator so like my aura is like big like people feel me when i walk into a room um and I, have to, I can give myself permission to not always be that, which is really cool. So that's what I, that's what went through me. When, Thank you for uh, sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. For um, it, was, it was beautiful. Um, the compassion, yeah. So, um, what is it that, um, has brought you into this space? Is there something specifically that you want to speak into or would you like to tune into what's alive inside of you? Uh, firstly, I came here to witness and to support you. Uh, in terms of what I could work on, I'm happy to tune in and to uh, feel what's alive. I'm also going to open up this thing, and only because I feel very safe in your in your presence. Uh, I've never done past life work. I've always been curious, but I've never felt safe enough. You know, I didn't know a person well enough to go, all right, let's, let's explore. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do feel safe with you. So if mm -hmm. you want to go there, I, I give you permission. I give you full permission. Um, okay, let's drop in and um, do you consent to me being in your energy field? Yes, full body, yes. You consent to me bringing up anything in any distortions in your field that feel relevant to share in this space? The clear vessel, yes, absolutely. And um, the awareness that you have permission at any time to stop this process and speak your needs. I won't, but thank you. And yes, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Taking some breaths together, allowing your field to open to me, allowing me to come into your space. So we're taking a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. In through the nose and out through the mouth. In through the nose and out through the mouth. allowing every part of your being to soften and open, to be witness, to be seen, to be vulnerable, knowing you are safe, held, protected. 
asking the identity, the ego, to just step to the side. Be an observer for recognizing this role in the human experience. We're going to communicate with the subconscious, with the higher self. We're going to ask for the point in time beyond this time, space, dimension and reality where you first felt the grief that you're holding in your body. You do not have to have a vision, you do not have to have a storyline, but I want you to go there, go there now. Knowing you're safe, allowing any emotion to come up, all the grief that's been surfacing for you over the last few weeks, Letting go of all the stories, narratives in this lifetime, letting it go, releasing them, sending them up to be creator, to be purified, transmuted. We're going into the grief that was before that. What are you experiencing? Opening the heart. Okay. Hmm. I'm normally very visual, but I'm feeling kinesthetic here. It's just a, it's just a, a void, just below my, my heart, just uh, below my sacrum. I'm oh, sorry, mm -hmm. like, here. that part of you that you're feeling a void in your solar plexus under is it in the center of your being or is it off to one side is it off to one side a little more to the left a little more to the left yeah. going into that void that empty space that part of you that has fragmented and lost the grief attached to that lost part of you. Allowing that part of you, knowing that it's okay, it's just emotion. I have a voice. What would it say? <laughs> uh, I, I had a series of images and um, audio. Mm -hmm. I like to and share. It was like, Acknowledging that I have a, a, a resonance with um, uh, Gothe or Gotz, um, who wrote The Ring, and he lived a remarkable life. But I, I believe that he had equally as great a life. He had 65 different careers in his lifetime uh, a statesman, uh, a writer, an actor, a, a playwright. Um, a politician, an inventor. He had all these different careers in his lifetime. Um, and I just felt all these images of struggle, of, of strife, of being misunderstood. Of, uh, you know, I, I, I <laughs> friction. Uh, it's just a, it's, yeah, just a feeling of what someone who, who is champion now would have gone through in his lifetime. Um, it's so, so much more struggle and tribulations that we would never 
read about it anymore because it's, it's hidden from time to through history. What part of you that has this struggle, this constant battle, this internal battle, Recognize that part of you without a story, without a narrative. Do you witness and see the battle within, the conflict within? Are you ready to release that? If you're not, what does it give to you? What are you holding? I'm just gonna go with what I'm seeing and feeling. Mm -hmm. I'm holding, holding three flowers in my right hand. What do they re represent to you? Uh, uh, they represent me, my future partner, and God. What does this bring up inside your body? A bit of tingling, a bit of trepidation, a bit of definitely excitement mixed with that. A purity. You, these gifted flowers, these flowers that have been handed to you, and you let go of the battle and the conflict, the fight for what is there to be received. Going into that place within your field, and we're releasing any soul fragments or distortions, just dissolving away from that place. No need to know what they are. No need to attach a story. Just letting them go. And pulling back the lost soul fragments, receiving them, 
receiving all of those virtues, the representation of those flowers. Back into your being. Ayare, Indiare, Akayare, Darayara, Huea, Andehiara, Hea. Allowing that energy to move and dance between your field, softly, gently, receiving. We're asking any ancestral wounding that's attached to this, known or unknown, to be completely released from the energy field in the mind, body and the soul components. Anything that's required to be known will be known to the higher self and will come through in the next few days, if not now. Allowing that part of the field to repair itself, allowing that energy to settle. Asking your higher self if this process is complete. Allowing it. Do you feel this process is just a process of shifting your energy field? Or is there more to be witnessed? What are you experiencing? Uh, feels like a cool breeze. It feels like I'm on the right path. Mm -hmm. and there's some certainty. Experiencing my higher self really giving me, not even me to say whether I allowed it or not, but giving me that writer that I meant to be. Just me. Ready to allow that part of you fully in? <laughs> You're ready to walk? More. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I uh, I have resistance, but I definitely uh, I definitely want it. On a conscious level, I definitely want it. Mm. <laughs> How are you feeling in your body? Clear. Yeah. Clear. Clear. Yeah. 
the, um, there, there was definitely ancestral wounding and I did see that you, um, there was an acknowledgement of something and I'm very curious to see what you experienced in your mind when that um, was released from your body, what awareness came up. <laughs> it, it, it's a series of images and flashes. Uh, it, it very like 1800, I don't even know it's 1800s, but it's an old kind of house with white walls and um, brown wood, fires, torchlight, uh, shouting, and just, it's, it feels like a, a person's lifetime and bustling. It's just a series of images. Um, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever that means, uh, what that <laughs> yeah. uh, it doesn't have to mean anything. You were shown exactly what you needed to see, and it was released in whatever way it needed to be released, just for that recognition. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. Thank you for participating. Thank you for being seen. And um, your process. <laughs> Thank you for your beautiful work in light. I appreciate you. I see you. Thank you. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Thank you. Um, mm, mm. The challenging piece here is that I can feel my energy dropping <laughs> and What's really true for me to do? Um, what feels really true for me and for, I guess, for spirit in honoring myself and everyone else is to close off this call and this container now and honor my energy levels um, for the space that I've been holding. Um, and whilst doing that and while saying that i would also like to honor the three souls that are still on this call that haven't had a chance and have sat through two hours of processing which is epic space holding guys like absolutely epic space holding and i hope that you received beautiful activations and shifts just from this witnessing um but i would also love to recommence this um, and give you the opportunity to go through a process and be vulnerable um, and uh, move through whatever it was that was either coming up for you or, um, yeah, I would still love to, to honour that. So if we could, I know that we may not all align in time again, <laughs> um, and I've just got to trust that process. <laughs> Um, um, but what am I getting? Uh, I, uh, if Friday is something that's possible. Um, I'm getting Friday at 8 a.m. Um, so I will put that as an offer opportunity to you guys um, to honor you for sitting here um, and being a part of this process. And I really, truly respect you for the courage, for, for holding space, um, for receiving and, and holding me also. It's nice to be held as well. Um, and I am grateful for anyone who's dropped in and out of this on Facebook. Um, really beautiful as I'll do a recap. There was a lot of different processes. Everyone went into different places within their own consciousness and their mind. Um, every single one of the people on this call was a bringer of change. So if you're not aware of that terminology, that's a way show or a light worker for someone who's here with a specific intention to create more consciousness on the planet. Uh, Pretty much the only people that would listen to me would resonate to that. So, <laughs> um, the some of those blocks that come up are soul blocks, 
So we witnessed a couple of cell blocks that came up, um, which was really nice. There was the severing of the divine father to the divine mother through the energy body, which creates a disconnect um, and different fear stories attached to being crazy if you remember your purpose. Um, there was um, also the I'm not doing enough for humanity story um and the unworthiness of life basically based on that um we had some childhood trauma um, pieces and reconciling the little girl inside so that was beautiful to witness and experience how when we see the fragmented parts of ourselves that uh, basically uh, we disconnect from in trauma, we can meet them and bring them back into our heart and dissolve any of those feelings and come into more acceptance, love and connection with our inner children. Um, and then we had an interesting one with Chris that had quite a few different layers from before this time space dimension, um, grief and connecting with uh, well, I would say that it was no more needing to uh, have the conflict within to seek and being able to open to receiving. Um, and oh, there was ancestral wounding as there as well. So um, I think you beautiful, beautiful people. Thank you, Facebook. Um, and I will put this on YouTube. Um, if you don't follow me on YouTube, I would love a subscription. <laughs> My YouTube is um, Giaia Ariati. Um, and that's how you pronounce my name. So for anyone who has <laughs> unclarity, it's Giaia. So it's Giaia. Um, I love you. Thank you for watching. And mwah, big kisses. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we will end this.